Right, this is what we came up with for an electric starter for our CR125 uh, shifter carts. This is a one-way bearing uh, from a Coleman cart starter. This is just a 3 8 inch drive uh, extension that we uh, put in the end of that bearing. These things I think were about 40 bucks, but I've since found the uh, one-way bearings uh, for like, I don't know, five or six dollars online and at a local bearing supplier. It's just a matter of if you can do a little bit of machine work to make the one-way bearings, uh, you know, fit into the drill. It's just a shaft on the other end that's chucked into the drill. And that just allows, it will drive in one direction. You can see it locks when you spin it. When you try to spin it back that way, it's locked. And then it allows it to freewheel in this direction. And that just allows, when the engine starts, if it were to rev real fast, it allows, you know, it won't pull the drill out of your hand. It'll just, it'll just spin, allow you to pull the drill out. This is the other piece. This is just actually a 3 8 inch drive socket. Uh, my father, who's a machinist, made the brass piece. Um, and this just screws into the end of the flywheel. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it down in there, but uh, there it is sticking out of the end of the flywheel. Then there's a hole in the seat right there. And when you want to start the cart, all you do is put that in there, engage it in the flywheel, and pull the trigger. Uh, now this drill and battery, A, has plenty of torque to spin the motor over even when it's hot. It doesn't make a bit of difference. And um, B, this battery started two carts through a complete practice day, which was multiple sessions uh, over a complete day. And then uh, that cart also has the same setup. So we started both carts on that one battery and still had two thirds of the battery indicator uh, on the charge uh, bar when we got home. So you can easily get through a complete weekend on one battery and I'll just give it a quick uh, demonstration. It's in neutral. It is sitting on the ground, doesn't spin the wheels. So, you know, that's not a problem, but it's in neutral. shut off there to kill the motor so it takes just a second so the setup works great the only uh, downside to it is that um, there is enough play in that hole and in the engagement of uh, that tip that if you move the engine slightly to uh, do the chain tension it's fine you can still engage it in there but if you have to switch gears and make a big change to the engine position uh, then, of course, the hole doesn't align to the flywheel anymore, so that would present a problem. Now, we overcome that just by having different length chains. Like I say, there's enough adjustment to do the chain tension. Uh, you know, you're only moving a little bit either way uh, for tension, but if you, um, if you have a big change, you, you'd have to have different length chains, which is what we have. One for when we uh, put on the sprint gears and one when we uh, have the road course gears on there. Uh, so that's all there is to it. It works fantastic. Actually, when I started to make this video, uh, this engine had flooded in transport coming back from the last race so bad that as I tried to spin it with the drill, uh, it was uh, hydro locking just a little bit and spitting uh, fuel out between the exhaust manifold and the pipe up there, uh, just squirting out raw fuel. So it was flooded pretty bad, but the nice thing about that setup is I just put it on the drill, hold the throttle wide open, and crank it with the drill until it starts. And even though it was flooded and I actually blew some fuel out of the tailpipe, it was flooded so bad, I was still able to start it in under uh, 30 seconds, which I never would have been able to do by hand. So it's cheap, it works extremely well, and it saves us a lot of time at the track. If you have any questions about how it was made, uh, feel free to uh, shoot me a line.